Nice placement. Yeah. Is he getting Clan Castle? Oh, he's gonna get the Clan Castle too. Oh! It is time to send a team to the upper bracket finals. Our first upper bracket semifinals match is about to get underway. Let's welcome to the stage Navi and Repotted Gaming. Oh boy, I am looking forward <laughs> to this one. And it looks like we have General X of Repotted Gaming going first versus Klaus, who closed out the war for them yesterday. The Queen Charge, or Recall Queen Charge, into Super Barbarians. Let's see where he starts off with a wall breaker, just to open up access for his Archer Queen. A little bit of funneling. We have an easy ride here initially, but as it was mentioned in the last attack, you always got to be careful with charges. Yeah, and both of these teams are not just known for their weapons, but especially also their base building. And as we talk about it for reported gaming many, many times, uh, we have to keep it into account for Navi as well. And I'm sure that they prepared very well, especially for their opponents. So we have to wait and see if something is baited, like we could see yesterday in their match versus VN Esporting with the Red Mine Farms against the Queen Charges. But so far, everything went well for General X. Absolutely. And you might think, why, why wouldn't he just take that one extra defense? When you are using the recall strategy, it's not always about the amount of buildings you get, because you have to factor in time as well. He's almost one minute into this attack, so once you've got the value that you need, recall her and get it to the other side. That's right, and he has put her down on the other side, but you're absolutely right. Uh, being conscious of time, General X is now starting with his push with the help of the Log Launcher, and he wants to get into this multi-compartment, which is easy because the wall is open, but now he has to face the CC and uses the Warden ability right away. Wow, Warden ability to make a strong push into the side here, and then just funneling the bottom left corner with the Super Barbarians. Queen getting low on health, so the ability will now be forced, but he has lots of spells to reinforce towards the back end of this attack. Yeah, but I think now it's all about the Town Hall, really, because he mm. seems to be planning on getting this with his little uh, squad there. The Yeti is now following the King, but they first go to the other defenses, so let's see if he can take out the Town Hall. King being revived by the Phoenix, going to the other Yeti, follows! And he's got the Town Hall down! Yeti gets it, he's just about to secure that Monolith, which will protect the Archer Queen, has multiple invisibility spells and the Skeleton spell for the Royal Champion. But notice as well, Maxi, the Rage Spell Tower on the back end already activated. It's probably going to be a roundabout back there by the time his Royal Champion is up. Yeah, absolutely right, but you said it before, the time could be the biggest problem here, but on the other end, he has still two Rage Spells left, so let's see where he's going to invest them. I think it depends also on the timing in which the troops arrive at this yeah, at this compartment, which seems to be incredibly trapped at the top side. For now, the Royal Champion is rich. He uses an Invis on her as well, and I think he would prefer if the Queen was tanking some of the defenses, but even the ground bow is not shooting away at her, but still at the skellies now. Goes again for the Royal Champion, but the spell usement is perfect so Far. Absolutely. Redirecting the skeletons. Oh! oh, the queen does get the expo. That could be huge here, but with time, we have 10 seconds. He just needs to get those troops You're in. not going to make it there, Carbon. We are live on the floor here, and we get some crowd reactions here as we make our way through. But Carbon with that miss. How do you feel about this match here? Do you think Nami will take this, or do you think it'll be Rapotted? I think Rapotted's going to have to start. I know who you picked. Of course. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see. We'll see. We can hear that the fans have their back as Cynthia is preparing once more to go in first. And we see what we love. Lots of skelly and lots of bad spells co uh, combined with the invisibility spell. What's he going to do this time around? Take out the whole base with those spells? We don't I know yet. I be surprised. Ten it's more Cynthia. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see. Well, I noticed that the rage towers are stuck. Here we go, here we go, here we go. He's going for the town hall again. Oh, wow. I thought he might be Nice placement. Yeah. Is he getting Clan Castle? Quickly. 
Okay, the town oh, he's gonna get the Clan Castle down. too. He's still got oh, all the invisibility spell activities. He's got the oh, Expo oh, Town Hall. Oh, yes, he did Okay. <laughs> to get the multi. Okay, okay, he didn't get the multi, yes, but next to the town hall, he also got the clan castle out of the way, but honestly, oh, we know how good reported gaming are with their base building, and I wouldn't be surprised if somehow, even if you, if I don't know how, this would be baited. I, I definitely think when you have a player like Cynthia that uses the skeleton, uh, the, the skelly donut quite a, not, a lot, that they would give up the town hall in order to provide a base that could then defend. So let's see whether that is the case. The Log Launcher is getting pretty good value down the bottom here. Rage Tower is still not activated, though. There it goes, and the Expos will provide huge damage onto the heroes. Yeah, and the big problem now is the Log Launcher did not open the wall to those multi-infernos, and that's exactly where he wanted to go with this kill squad. So maybe some troops will uh, go to the walls now after there are basically no more other defense or buildings around there. But yeah, what I meant is the, 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 the base offered the value of taking out the Town Hall and the clan castle with the invisibility spell and, and some other enforcement. So yeah, maybe that's what the base builder had in mind, but maybe. okay, the, the queen goes to the multis, that's important. Very important, and with that ability, she will actually get both of those multi-infernos and the expo. We noticed that the king um, helped along the bottom there with the electro titan, now onto the monolith, distracting for the royal champion to come in. What are you thinking towards the back end of the base here? He's still got 14 super barbarians to reinforce as the royal champion moves across. Yeah, no more spells though, and I think if there are two skelly traps, then uh, he will not be able to get it. The thing is the rage tower was activated early, so it's now slowly running out, which can help him a lot. But we can see already, these super barbarians are being taken out pretty quickly by the, oh, by the skelly and there are the two skelly spells that I was talking about, and they are oh. exactly what is stopping Cindy, this time around, Skelly's and counter he's Skelly. 87%. Remember, that's exactly what General X said. And then right. he finishes it, so we have a perfect tie. And it's Emir getting ready, rubbing his hands together. So he has all the blood rush he needs right there in his fingers to deploy the troops as quickly and as accurate as possible as he wall breaks with a super wall breaker that is supposed to be taken out by the defense and then, due to its death damage, opening the wall. And that went perfectly. However, the timing of the first headhunter there was not ideal. Same for the second, actually, but he is patient enough to let his own queen finish the enemy queen herself. Now the rage spell has to come down because there is big, big damage in this compartment. Yeah, and even decides to invest the invisibility spell because you want to make sure the queen is already under rage and at full health before getting into those high damage areas. Recalls her out of there to make sure she's not under any more fire. Over to the right hand side and he can now breathe a sigh of relief and reset a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And the funnel with the uh, with the balloons work perfectly as well. At the same time, he's sending in oh another little squad of a, a hero with the heroes with the war. Same like the General X before, and this is basically the same attack setup. So let's see how well he can handle the time this time around. Because remember, General X's attack would have been a three star given the power of the troops he had left, but was a big time fail. Yeah, going with the Christmas hero skins here on <laughs> theme, maybe that will bring him a little bit of luck. Log Launcher just about to open that wall to the Town Hall. One Electro Titan goes to the outside, but does manage to catch that in the warden ability, getting everything. Barbarian King in a huge amount of damage now. Where did the Yetis go? Does he decide to rage them as they move to that Town Hall? Yeah, probably he should, but like it's good that he's holding on to the rage because at this point they are just shooting away at the defensive clan castle troops and there are ice golems in there, so I think it wouldn't make sense to invest anything. And as he doesn't have the invis anymore, that could make the Yetis retarget to the town hall, he cannot really do anything but just watch what is happening. And at this point he has to worry about the town hall takedown. He does. He's got the royal champion to reinforce. He's still got two rage spells and two freeze, so he's got a bit of flexibility, but it is really the pathing path to the town hall. 
Wrong wall, though. Wrong wall. He wanted the queen to take a wall into that town hall. And now the problem is she can move all around. He should have probably deployed the super barbarians quicker. Uh, this is so trouble, Carbon. This is really dangerous right this now. He has to put the road champion in the town hall, right? Does he have a choice? This would be interesting to listen to because they are trying to figure out as a team. What do we do here? How do we get the highest percentage alongside that town hall? You'll get a two star with the range. But watch that model. Okay, freeze. Okay. And he's got the support there. He'll get the town down. And there's no time to finish it. Nice try. Yeah, they were tied on percentage. So it just has the bar. And he really ends up apparently getting another time fail with it. But just imagine if he had taken out this town hall with the Yeti and could have used the Royal Champion on the outside. Yep. So clapping all around the audience here in Helsinki, Finland, in the arena because it was a great effort. But still, Navi is able to hold back Repotted Gaming. stars for Navi yesterday. Gaku was the one who just missed out with his Inferno Dragons. But today, switching that up, the Queen Charge Twin Hawk Rider attack. We do have that recall spell using the Earth, the, the Wall Breaker straight away here, like you said, to get the Queen access. Tanking the Expo so that the Flinger can just take all of the defenses up the top there. Very time efficient as well to get that down early so it can get maximum value. Yeah, and I don't know, has he, has he checked for traps there at the, at the top side? Like, there could be skelly traps, giant bombs, but let's see what he can do. We know that Gaku is very, very routine with this attack strategy, as he also likes to use it in Legend League. So he knows perfectly when to use the spells, how to rage the Queen, and also can predict her pathing. So that's why he was early there with the Invis, because uh, he knew that there was incredible damage raining onto her. Absolutely, then just recalls her out of that location, has the entire compound and done. What do you see, Maxi? Yeah, the archers going to the Flame Fling are a little problem. He reacts quickly, but they are doing great damage because the Flame Fling is very squishy. Yeah, and the other troops can't get there because they've got to go through the other buildings. So even though they're just a couple of archers, that's maybe one or two extra fires from the Flame Flinger. I think as long as he gets the pathing to the multi-target Inferno with the troops inside, that's what he was after. And it looks like that is what happens. Oh yeah, and we can see the Super Hog Riders in there. They should be able to easily take out the Multi-Inferno. Um, I wonder if uh, if he was planning to have them work together. Ooh. Oh no, oh, no, they go on Oh, the that's wall. a problem. That's a problem. The Queen goes the other way around to chase the defensive Ice Golems, and now he has to worry about the Town Hall takedown. I don't think he can come back from this, so he has to yeah, send all the, the troops into the Town Hall now. Yeah, huge that with the that's where the clan castle troops bring that level of unpredictability archer queen going the other way he does use the modern ability here but nothing on the town hall yet as i say that royal champion locks on down it goes but what will be inside that poison tornado trap is also there and the hog riders they're not getting much further than this they also missed the most northern inferno tower which is now the target for the queen. Yeah, but that, like that's not the value that he wanted. And, yeah. and, and we said before that the uh, Super Hawk Riders were supposed to get it out of the way. Due to the um, elect, uh, to the Ice Golems, they were not able, even able to do that. And Gaku is falling short once again, but we see the strength of reported gaming spaces. They said yesterday in a winner interview that they prepared specifically for Navi because they were expecting to face them in their second match. And so far, it seems to have worked out perfectly for them. Absolutely. I'm sure every team has prepared for Navi. <laughs> we're going to play them at some point, most likely. So a very wise choice. And all of that preparation, we heard yesterday how much the teams have put into this, whether it's researching the attack strategies in the background, all of the base building, months of work leading up to this, starting to pay off in this matchup for Reported Gaming. And let's hear a little bit from the teams. Oh, there we go, and it's actually the Queen once again. And there we see the match-changing thing happening. The Queen went to the uh, went to the Ice Golem there instead of continuing to the Town Hall. And in my opinion, that was very, very unfortunate for Gaku. Yeah, it's one of those things that you've just got to react on the fly once it does happen. But that's where the Clan Castle troops are so important. And we hear sometimes from the teams trying to figure out what the other players are using because 
it can provide that unpredictability, and if you know what's there, you can plan for it. Exactly, and it was the same problem as in the attack before from, from Emir. He had the same problem with the clan castle. But now, back into Repotted Gaming. Who can get the first three star? Such a huge attack, this one. I feel whoever gets the first three star on this puts themselves so much in the lead. Really gives themselves that driving force. A couple of balloons to snipe defenses and check for the battle blimp moving in alongside the rage. He's got yetis in there, and hopefully he can clear this entire compartment and has popped the rage tower as well. Yeah, that's right, and he gets the expo, yes, gets the scatter shot, and even I think it was a wizard tower around there. So pathing is perfect now, and the damage dealing defenses are taken care of. And we also have to take into account that if Reported Gaming is able to get the first three star, they will also have to percentage lead already because they got the higher scoring two stars so far. I think the pathing is set here, and the queen should make her way into this other, uh, this multi compartment there on the right side. Exactly, and then he has seven Super Barbarians, so he can then easily funnel the buildings further down there in order to just walk the Queen in towards the Town Hall. He's got to get there first, though. It's never easy with the Queen taking damage. Just about gets that free spell in to protect her ability, which is huge as a bit of a backup plan once you get into that area around the Town Hall where you know there's going to be more traps as well. Yeah, it was very clever for him to use that free spell because the, uh, he used an aggressive rage before, and that the aggressive rage always means that the queen is raged up but the healers are not but since ever since the unicorn pet had been introduced um, that means that the rage can also also affect the unicorn's healing and you can be more aggressive with the spells but the skelly trap held the queen back there but enough about that too much theory now let's see the hog riders rain into the base from the left side and move in from the left but he's also going to keep an eye on that queen he's got free spells and invisibility spells decides to rage her up first and he will get that town hall should be good for the monolith afterwards as well so we can shift focus to the Hog Riders with the Grand Warden ability used in preparation for the Rage Tower popping. But what's going to happen once it expires? He's got those free spells ready. Oh no, he's dropped one on top of the Headhunters. Okay, yeah, that was very unfortunate and he could have really used this in the back end for the Rage Up defenses for his Hog Riders and Royal Champion. That might actually be the game changer here. He did great in holding up this Queen. And there we can see the Red Mine Farm. So Reported Gamer are going to take that into account. Oh, with Next no, he's okay. He's okay. He's got a. He's got a rock okay. Yeah. There it is. We hear it in the audience. We see the team clapping. And the invisibility on top of that. Wow. Percentage and spell protecting the royal champion in the end. The first three star of this upper bracket match, and we know that whoever gets knocked down from here plays Tribe Gaming later today. <laughs> It is. He also used the Skelly Bat Donut yesterday, and here we go. We've got <laughs> the bats. Dude, look. He's got 42 super barbs here. I know. I saw one of my clanmates do this like a year ago. It's like seeing the combination. It's never going to work. He's going to use these four. So we've got the. Turns the eagle. Invisible initially, going for the Monolith, the Expo, the Multi-Inferno. Once they've got the Bomb Tower and the Air Sweeper down, they can start targeting on those other defenses. Gets the Monolith, Expo goes down, and so does the Multi! Yep, great job. And I don't think he wanted to go for the Eagle. Like, it was just the other defenses there, and that worked perfectly. And we've yep. seen this strategy from Stars yesterday. So it seems to be one of the strategies that the teams have specifically prepared for the uh, pre prepared for the World Championship Finals. We always talk about the secret strategies. And yesterday, it was already successful for Stars. But he went for the Town Hall yesterday. So let's see what he can do today. One thing I'm seeing from these teams is more of those huge hero dive attacks. And in this case, using the golems to really get a lot of value in combination with the log launcher. Do you think he's going up to that town hall? Because that's what it looks like. He's going all the way through. 
Yep, I think so, and I think that's what he brought the jump spell for as well, to jump in this dead zone between the scatter shot and the expo. But now for for now he has to deal. Oh no, actually he jumps in the core of the base. Mm. Okay, so he just wants to funnel there on the outside, and his big push comes through the core. But there is a lot of super minions doing dealing great damage onto his troops right now. Archer Queen steps up to start getting rid of those barbarians from the barbarian king. Pop the tornado trap early. Town hall is activated. The Archer Queen has her ability, but at the moment she's lagging back. Phoenix, Phoenix pops all of those red air bombs. Can the king get the town hall? No, he's Ooh, distracted. Queen. queen goes up though. Where is she going with the defending king, Maxi? Oh no, and he didn't turn the king invisible, but the queen. Oh, come on, queen! Come on, queen! Come on, queen! Fantastic reactions to freeze the town hall. Allow Diggy to stun it. With the queen going down, he's got an ice golem, the headhunters for that back end queen, and ten super barbarians. He sh if there's open wall compartments. He should be able to get in and take this down. Yeah, you're right. And even if there's a spring trap, but I think he's tested for that. Yeah, he could, like, it would have been a problem because they would have frozen. And I think he's got it. Two more super barbarians. And we know the scatter shot is a splash damage defense. Yes, but he sends them in from all the sides. So he might be able to overpower the scatter shot. 30 seconds, so time won't be a problem. But Ooh, it's getting got ups. Can he get it? Everything right here. He's cheering. And the scatter shot is taken down. Three star. Navi keeps the score level, but reports of gaming remain in the lead on percentage. And it is going to be Tim Tastic. The calmness in person. We cannot see him move a muscle while he is attacking. But I'm sure deep down inside, there are some nerves that are shaking right now. But let's see what he brought. 14 super goblins. So he's going to snipe the town hall, most likely. But there are, oh, oh, there goes the donut for two scatter shots and the eagle. And you cannot really bait a donut, right? Because there are no traps you can set against it. Absolutely. And as you correctly said in the last attack, you want to just turn the buildings invisible that you don't want. So he doesn't want the clan castle in this scenario. He doesn't want any skeletons going to that. So he's able to just keep that invisible get the other defenses, whilst the Flinger is still doing its job down there. Yeah, and now he's sending in the Queen without any protection so far. A couple of Super Barbarians sent in, but it seems like the Queen's major job is to take out the, the um, storages around there so he can target the Town Hall with the Super Goblins. Indeed. He did use the skeleton spell to distract the monolith. Whilst it did lock onto Diggy initially, you've got to remember, once Diggy goes back underground, it retargets. So the skeleton spell, perfect in that scenario to take that down. The Archer Queen will move to the right. Oh, no, she goes to the left, but I didn't see the six builder hood down there. And she will then redirect in after the gold storage. Perfect job here. Yeah, and she doesn't even need the super goblins to take that out. Now, I wonder, is he go? No, is he going to snipe the... Clan Castle? No. Okay. So he can just now use them for funneling. Maybe it was a backup plan if the Queen didn't make her way in there. But so far it is, it is, it's looking interesting. Like, I don't know what to say. This guy is so creative, Judo. What's he going to do next? Well, where do you think he comes? Do you think he comes in from the left here? Because, nope, I guess not. I was going to say, because that Rage Tower is not activated, he can use the Warden ability to get the Queen early, but decides to come in from the north in order to... Yeah, dude, that King can just go in and get the uh, Queen down on the back side of the base. Yeah, really good. Is the, uh, champion, champion. Yeah, right? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's kind of cool. There he is. There he is. There's so much ground, like all the ground expo. Yeah, I think he's got it. No, he's got a really solid chance here. Yeah, this base is looking over. Yeah, he's done. This base is done. This base is not looking like it was going to be a three at first. It was looking weird. Like the queen went the wrong way a little bit. We got it. Nice job, Tim. Oh, it's so good! Oh, this many troops left over, even turning the balloons invisible, so he doesn't lose any of them towards the multi-target inferno. Pressure is building on our current world champions, the community favorites down in this war. Even if they three-star here, Reported Gaming can take the win.
because they have the war in their hands should they three-star in the final attack. We do have a specialty from Kazuma, the recall super bowlers, one that he's very well versed with, starting with a giant to test for any of traps, skeleton traps, as you correctly said in the previous attack. Then we can use the flame flinger, and also tanking for the archer tower since he has to deploy it very close, make sure it gets down and doesn't get any shots off. Yeah, and so far he did all of that perfectly. Also setting up the funnel with the queen there, and now he's going to recall her probably after the archer tower takedown. There goes the recall, and now he's probably going to drop her right away. Did he drop her at the bottom? No. Yep. Not yet, I think. Oh no, yeah, there's the warden down there. He's got a double hero walk. My apologies. <laughs> Yeah, but she will come down in just a second and then the big, big boulder smash will go on into the base. There she goes and everything is working together now at the bottom side. Setting that funnel down the bottom with the Warden. He's got everything moving in towards the jump. He's already tested right across that top side. I'm here with he and so he the team manager the and coach for Navi. How do you think they are going to do on the back end of the war here? Always leave? Yeah. No, it's not over. No, they definitely have a chance here. They gotta get a defense though. Because he was looking pretty good here. Yeah, around that town hall, maybe go towards that multi inferno afterwards. But we have to wait and see. The king is deployed and will probably work together with the Electro Titan and the Yetis. And maybe he can even get them Ooh. into the multi. But ooh, the town hall takedown is now the biggest problem. We should talk about that. Yeah, and he had one minion that popped it and looked like a huge amount of traps behind the town hall, protecting those healers a little bit. So once the Arch Queen takes it down, as she does, she's still got the healers to keep her topped up. Here comes the Headhunter to try and reinforce too late with the Barbarian King going down to the Monolith, then taking down the Queen, but sneaks in the Royal Champion to the bottom side to then take that out. Yes, and he's using two wizards onto this uh, Eagle Artillery. But uh, yeah, the first one is taken out by, this, by the Expo already, and he doesn't have too much force anymore. Basically, just the Royal Champion ability, and he seems to be falling short. And if this is a two-star, that sets a clear mark for Reported Gaming's last attack to be a certain percentage two-star to win this war. Wow. Reported Gaming could have won it with a three-star of their own, but now they don't even need that, like you said. Incredible work from the bases. I mentioned at the start of this attack, Kazuma is well-versed in this Super Bowler strategy. So Reported Gaming would have known that and no doubt built things especially. We've seen a lot of red A-bomb farms behind the town hall in a couple of these attacks, but just like that, it is slipping away from Navi with another two-star attack, Maxi. Yes, and that means that the bar is set. Reported Gaming need a 75% two-star to win this war and continue in the upper bracket. Once more, the finishing attacker is Timpa. And honestly, it's kind of a bummer because he's their best scoring attacker. And for the second time in a row, he needs to get a safe two-star, but this at least at a higher percentage, in his last attack. But I don't think that he switched up his attack strategy. In fact, it's pretty close to the attacks we've seen from them so far. But this time, not using a recall spell on the queen, but rather seven lightning spells and an earthquake. And he's going to use them somewhere in the base to take out some defenses. Probably a rage tower as well. And there they go. Oh, taking out the scatter shot, ground bow, and the rage tower, which is also activated early. Always nice to get those rage towers down, and I really like the start here as well. Very time efficient. Once we've got a couple of those defenses down, Mortis tanked, the flame flinger can come in. He's got funneling absolutely everywhere over the base. Brilliant start here, and like we said, keep your eyes on the bottom right. A 75% two-star is all reported gaming need to win this.
Yeah, the Town Hall takedown is going to be crucial for this attack, but so far it's looking extremely good. Everything is working according to plan, and we know that Teampa is able to just come up with great plans over and over again. The Flame Blinker working hard on the Eagle and eventually will be taking it out. The, the Electro Titans coming in from the side and also funneling some storage buildings on the outside with the Super Goblins to make sure everything can work together and get into this Town Hall compartment. Just making sure they take that one little gap so they move on in. He's got lots of spells to reinforce and the Warden ability trying to save onto that until they get right next to the Town Hall. Take it down. The Queen locks on. Town Hall about to go down. Royal Champion from the left. And the percentage is creeping up now, Maxi, as we move in with three spells remaining. Yeah, and the Flame Flinger has opened, but there are also troops in there that can take out more building and thus collect more percentage points. We see the Royal Champion still with the ability in The troops everywhere. Two more spells. It's climbing. 72, oh. 73, 75! They we have it! They are in the upper bracket finals. Are they going to three-star here as well? What a performance from them with the RC ability and the invisibility wow. left over. He's done it. He didn't even need the three-star, but he wants it anyway. Repotted Gaming take a well-deserved victory here and means that our last match of today, Maxi, is going to be a repeat of last year's final wow. in the lower bracket. One of these teams is going home. You are absolutely right. Tribe Gaming versus Navi is going to happen. Focusing back in on the replay there, the relief on their faces, getting the victory, and they have just been so good. But like you said, let's see if Navi can get that closing three star. finishing it off for his team. So let's see what he had in the bag. You know, if he has had prepared a secret strategy, he might have even switched it up. But no, okay, he's coming in with the same strategy as stars before. A big donut coming in with two skelly spells and two bad spells, finishing it off with super barbarians. He's concentrating because he knows he knows you have to be so precise with those spell drops at the start. Indeed, and the one thing that I am looking at in this army, two healers. <laughs> I still remember when he, he did this last year with just the tiny little queen charge. Hog Rider checking for traps down there, just making sure the flinger is good. Once he's done that, being time efficient, we can then use the bats. Where is he going to do? There we go. Going for the clan castle. The multi-target inferno and the expo here, Maxi. That's right. And he finds a skel uh, sorry, a Tesla farm right there. And even though that doesn't make his skelly bed donut um you know, have no uh, success, but uh, it means that the value is not that big because he didn't create extra pathing for his troops. And on top of that, for some reason, he was not able to trigger that range tower C. How it's just about to get triggered, but didn't end up being. That means he's gonna face Raged Up, Tesla, and Expo. Sadly, the Inferno is in that compartment, so let's see what happens here. Funnel set beautifully to the bottom as he opens the flinger with Valkyries to clear the bottom side. Warden Walk at the top, so then we can see the stab with the heroes, presumably now coming into the uh, southeast side of the base. Yeah, some Valkyries funneling the outside, but they don't have too much value there. Just getting a couple of buildings, but of course the funnel is definitely set for his push through the core. He's got three Super Wall Breakers as he wants to open the first two layers, getting into the Eagle Compartment and then jump into the Town Hall Compartment. But you said it, Rage Up Teslas. Two Rage Up Multis. That's what's waiting for in them. So he has to go early with the Warden ability, I suppose. I was thinking that myself. He's got a long way to go to this Town Hall, Maxi. He's got to nail this next wall break. Otherwise, he's going to have to allow his troops to punch through one of these walls. A very nervous moment here. Is he even going to send a bunch of Super Barbarians in? No, using the Warden ability. Actually, oh no, yeah, manages to get a jump right through. 
Yeah, okay, so that was a great jump spell, uh, jump spell placement, but you're absolutely right. A Warbreaker there could have done good, because this, to, to deploy this perfectly is very hard. But Klaus was able to pull it off. He used the Warden ability, yes, but he still has the Queen ability intact. But look at this, Judo, another Rage Spell Tower covering this Town Hall, two Expos, and the Warden, so he has to react quickly. And now it's all about if there are traps around that Town Hall, and he can use the Queen ability to take it out. Yeah, the difficulty of deploying the jump like that is they only have that one little bit to get through. 30 seconds here, does manage to get the Town Hall, circling the backside of the base. He held on to all of those Super Barbarians. I don't know how Klaus does this place. Me neither. I wish I did. I think I would become a pro player again if I knew. But uh, wow, this is going to be a three star. And it's just Im 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 like incredible. We talked about the base building from Reported Gaming as well. And it seemed like they were expecting this, but still, they were not able to defend Klaus. But let's give it up for him once more for Navi. A great finish for them, showing what they got, but they will have to show it later on in the lower bracket as Reparted Gaming move on in the upper bracket. The defense is there from Reparted Gaming. We're on the level they need to be, and they put up 13 stars, and usually that 60% hit rate is the mark that you want to meet. That wins a lot of wars there, even though we have been seeing some 14-star wars here. But a very, very impressive showing here from Rapata Gaming so far.